All right, question of the day. What is your favorite game with a beast of a setup? Because today we're taking a look at Sankore, and this is a Euro game, kind of related at the heart to the mechanics of Merv, but not so close, but it's in the same kind of line. If you put them on the same shelf next to each other, you go, oh, those games are related to each other. Now, it is a very pretty game, but we're going to take a look at it, but it has 37 steps of setup, or 30-something steps. we got to run in here and tell it you about this. Run in. It has 32 sets of setup, which I did. I didn't do it. And it took a very long time. It felt like it was a job to set it up. You put these guys in the bag, and then you randomly draw them out of the bag to put on the thing. And then or, put the books in the bag and randomly and draw them out. And then take those out and put the books in the bag and then randomly draw the out. books to put on the board. Then you take the tokens in the bag to take them randomly out to put on the board. It was just a lot of repetition with a lot of different things and it felt like a job. Felt like the Phantom Toll Booth. I want you to pick up this pile of sa sand with tweezers and move it right here. That's what it felt no, like it a little felt bit. like severance and not the goat part. Not the goat part. But you know how they're typing on the computer. Yeah, and just, just looking at the symbols and patterns, yeah. So, a lot of setup, but let's take a look at what Senkori does, how it plays, and we'll come back up call, and give you final, 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 final thoughts. thoughts. Hey, before we go any further, we have been slinging the Dice Tower Space hoodies and shirts off the shelves like crazy. We've got the first orders out. We're doing a second run right now, so if you want to get your Dice Tower hoodie, space hoodie, and space shirt, put those orders in right now at DiceTowerStore.com, and we will get those to you within about a week and a half from you watching this video, unless you're watching it later, at which point this is probably irrelevant. All right, this is Senkore. Now, it's a game in which you are playing to build up students at the Senkore University in Timbuktu, Mali. Now, this is post-game, and it's wild. There's a lot going on here. But it looks way more complex than it actually is when it comes to playing the game. It actually flows pretty well. So let's talk about actions first. Now, you have a player board down here, which you're going to collect books, and you'll get prestige tokens, and you'll have favors, and you have classes down here, and students will move up this little chart to do the classes. And you also have a set of tokens for each of the four different areas on the board, which is our area actions, which that is the meat of the worker placement gameplay. However, it's not every action you do does not involve that. So case in point, main action, you can enroll a student. You'll see there will be students along these tracks here. You can just take the furthest most right student and add it to the bottom row of your university, or the university, your player board. You can establish an advanced class. You will pay a book of the same color as the class you're teaching, and you will place it out here onto one of your class stacks. Now, some of them have restrictions. They can go anywhere. Some of them can only go in this top three sections, and some of them can only go in the very top section. You then can teach a class. Now, when you teach a class, this is essentially the worker placement action, so we will come back to that last. Next, you can graduate a student. You can take a student of equal value to, I'm sorry, of the equal color of a book, and then you'll place them up here with a graduation token. The further up they are on the track and graduate, the more prestige points at the end of the game. Lastly, you can exchange a favor. So there are tokens on your player board that are blocking off sections down here. So I'll see if I can show this now really quickly. You can do one of two things when you do the exchange of favor. You can either take this and, or I'm sorry, you can either take one of your actions, your benefits from up at the top of the board there and gain one of these blockers, or you can get rid of one of the blockers. Those are the five actions you can do. You'll do two different actions on your turn. Now, just to clarify, the meat of the game comes in that form of teaching classes though. Up here on the main board, you have different areas. You have the Senkori Madrasa there. You have the, um, I can't remember what they call it, but this is the religious area, theology. You have the legal, and you have mathematics, and up there you have astronomy. So essentially what you're gonna be doing is when you take an action from one of these classes, so let's say you move a student onto this token. If you move the same color student, you will get to activate this student bonus, which this would be that favor action we just showed. If you have any of these advanced markers on your board, say this, you also get to activate those based on the color. You then take the action of the board. So you'll look and see there are numbers here under these spaces. So for the case of the math, or legal over there, law, you have a one knowledge on your board, plus whatever knowledge is revealed there, plus if you have any bonuses. So let's say we have seven knowledge. You then look over here and you can build up to any places that have a seven knowledge. Now you have to pay the cost and you'll notice some of them have two workers there. 
that would mean that on the player board, see how there's two spaces under this class? You would have to have one in each side and then move the one up to take the action. That's called a supported class. You'll place those out there and take the various benefits. Now, some of them will have Sincore tiles, which you will put into this section here, which will also be prestige points at the end of the game. This is also the game timer. As the 12th Sincore tile is placed, you'll finish the round, take another round, and then you will count points at the end of the game. Basically, all of these actions work the same way. They just give you different benefits. Up there in the astronomy, you have a chance to get prestige tokens early. Down here in theology, you have a chance to get books. Over here, you have a chance to get those advancement tokens. And over here, you have a chance to get gold. And all of these feed off each other really well. However, there are two sets of scoring for each section in the middle of the game. Number one is book scoring. You'll have a book here and a prestige token there. You'll then take majorities of each region who has the most pieces there. And if, you, if it's tied, the person with the highest tag goes there. And in this case, if it's tied again, person who has the highest, or a person who is on the sidewall goes. Now, each of them do scoring like that. Basically, the person who has the majorities in each of the four regions in each of the four places. That's book scoring and prestige scoring. You'll play doing these actions, doing these things, moving around your player board and placing the stuff out there taking the benefits like i said gold here at the end of the game something kind of wonky happens you're going to look at each of these sankori tiles and in this space now these would be filled up with sankori tiles and you will give them away to the person who across it connecting to it in that space so let's say one here well carla would get one because it's she has two tokens touching it and i have none going across it. she would take that put it in her area then you're going to look at one other thing that's very important to the game that would be the library over there so see how the books are laid out? You can choose when you teach a class and when you graduate a student to put books out onto the furthest left space of each of the, any of your shelf of your choice. And the reason you do that is that is how the score is manipulated. So currently in our game, the way it works is in each row, the first place books or the most books of the color are worth two points and the second place is worth one. Anything else is worth nothing. So in ours, dark blue and teal were both worth three points at the end of the game Purple was worth two, and orange was worth one, because it only made second place one time and nothing else. You'll then take all of your prestige tokens that you've collected here, and then you'll take them and add them to the prestige you have on your graduated cards, which match the color of the character that's on them. You'll then add them to the color of the Sankore tiles you collected, and then last but not least, you'll check any of the gold cards to see if they have a, a color on them. You'll get the points from them. That is how you play Sankore. All right, so that was Sankore. Now, wildly interesting game there, and that's a brief overview. Obviously, you need to look at the rules a little bit closer yourself to know them, but um, we do things in a metric now, a rubric, as it were, to break down the scores and give you a more accurate presentation. Now, again, all of this is subjective. I just I feel like I'm taking crazy pills that I have to remind on a lot of videos that this is a subjective review. You might love this game. You might hate this game, and both opinions are subjective. So... Starting number one with concept. This is kind of theme setting, all that stuff. Concept is an eight. I really like this era of history. I like all of this. I believe this is where a lot of really interesting philosophical arguments came from as well that we still talk about and debate today, uh, but as well as all of the, the buildings and the history and all that. So it really is an interesting concept. I'm a history buff. This era is just wildly entertaining to me just in world history in general. So it's an eight for me. Board layout. Now, this one I struggle with because... I couldn't figure out if we're going to put setup in here. I, did, I chose not to put setup in here. We'll put it in mechanics. Uh, the board layout, I actually like the way the board looks. However, it is one of those games where when you look at it you, at first, you go, I'm running away. I, cannot, I can't see what to do in this game. Because you have the four different sections, and it just looks a little wild until you realize, oh, this all works the same way. Each section works in a very similar way. So it's not like, well, down here you're playing this mini game, and up here you're drawing circles on the board. It's not like that. So it actually kind of makes sense and flows, and each of them has a little bit of different flavor to it. So it's a solid eight for me on mechanics. Oh, sorry, on board layout. Mechanics, I give it an eight and a half. Here's why, because I like the fact you just do two different actions. And I like that it's two different actions too, because somebody could stall turns and go, well, I'm taking a favor, I'm giving a favor back. Taking a favor, giving a favor back. And you cannot do that. That's why it says you have to take two different actions. So I like the fact that you can recruit the students, you can teach a class, you can learn a class or, or add a class, you know, establish a class. Like all that stuff to me is really cool. But I also like 
how the four different areas work. You know, with the camels, you're trying to move further out and establish these bases, and each of them give you a different resource type. And and they're also interestingly easy to do the game, the actions you want to do. It's not that hard. The hardest thing to do sometimes is when you don't have the right worker in the right positioning under a class. So that's the only tricky thing that can kind of mess you up. So it's an eight and a half on mechanics. Art direction. This is where I put set up uh, because the rest of the art direction is pretty straightforward. It's a seven and a half. So it drops it down from probably a full eight and a half to a seven and a half because that setup is just insane. I don't know why. I almost feel like there needs to be a bag for each thing. Let's pull the stuff randomly out of the bag and then put the stuff randomly back. Yeah, or just pull it randomly, like stuff like that. So it's just, you know, sit it in a pile and just reach over with the left hand and don't look. Like, I think that's easier. Uh, so art direction is a seven and a half. Art, eight and a half. I really have always liked this. I believe it's, you know, tools art. It's gorgeous looking stuff. Uh, just solid eight and a half. Gameplay, solid eight. Now, why I say that is because mechanics and gameplay are not the same. Mechanics are more how the game works. Gameplay is kind of almost the game experience I have. There was a lot of moments in it where I'm like, hmm. That's an interesting choice. Well, that's an interesting choice. And I go to do both of those on my turn, and I go, oh, crud, I can't do it because I, this worker's not here, or this is not here. Oh, I can move it with an inspiration token? Well, I can't because I don't have an inspiration token. So there's a couple of those very classic Euro moments of, I can't do the thing I want to do, so let me go to plan B. Oh, I can't do plan B either, so I got to go to plan C. And that's kind of uh, interesting. So gameplay for me is an eight. It's not even a super long game. Like I think if, if you had people who knew what, how to play it, it would play pretty quick because the things that are the game timer are things you have to do pretty much. Rule books of seven and a half could be higher. It's not a bad rule book, but my only okay. Let me let me hit it with the positives on the rule book first. There are a lot of really great examples. Almost every single action, actually every single action, including the area actions, has an example of this person did this, and here's what happens. I like that. What I didn't like is there were two major rules questions that are in the rule book. But they're not highlighted. There's not an asterisk. There's nothing. It was something that I had to look very closely. And I read the paragraph several times and I finally found it. So seven and a half, maybe that's not the rule book's fault, but I like things that are important. Case, I'll tell you the question. And I know someone's going to go, well, Brian, it's actually just on page 14. I know that. But I've read this rule book a whole bunch, right? The question that we had the first time we played was, can you build establish new classes on top of old classes and at first i thought the answer was no and then finally in one little sentence not spelled out very largely you can and that's good because that is a way to get rid of books that's a way to manipulate the score so you may not even need to use the class that you're building or establishing but you need to get rid of the books so that you can manipulate that score at the end so all in all totals out average to a solid 8.0 on the nose. No decimals, no rounding this time. 8.0 Sencore. Check it out if you like euros. I wouldn't call it heavy. I'd call it medium. But uh, setup's a pain. Gameplay's fun. Rule book, you just need to pay attention to a couple things in there. Because that that question I have wasn't in the FAQ, whereas another one was. So that actually kind of helped out. So Sencore. Now, I'm Brian Drake. Follow us on X and Instagram. Wow, I got it right for once. I have didn't say Twitter this time. Follow us on X and Instagram at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we will see you.